Work hard for what you want in life. You work hard for what you want in life. That, that, that your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're going to do. That your word is your bond, and you do what you say. You what you that you treat people with dignity and respect. That you treat, 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 treat people with respect. Reach of your dream and your willingness to work hard. The strength of your dream and your willingness to work for them. Hey guys, I'm Tatum. And it's your girl Milan. And welcome to episode 25 of the Black Girl Boss Podcast. Whoop, 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 whoop. 80, 25. <laughs> so y'all, excuse my voice. Like I was on my deathbed all week. So I'm finally up and moving again, but I still sound crazy. But we just gonna rock out anyway. And I want to give you guys a special apology because I wasn't here last week, but Tatum definitely held it down. I listened to the episode. I was in love with it, but you know, that's what black girl bosses do. When you got to hold it down alone, you do what? You hold it down. Make it work, yes. So today, you guys, we're going to be talking about, this is a question we get all the time. So many of you guys want to know do you have to go to school to be an entrepreneur? And I think it's really important that we have this conversation because Milan's got two degrees. I went to, to undergrad and we both are really big on just staying knowledgeable about our field and stuff like that. But a lot of people want to know, like, I didn't go to college. Can I still be an entrepreneur? Or I majored in this, but I want to do that. So Milan, let's start with talking about, like, why we used to go to college first place so why did you choose to go to school well I know I mentioned it several times on a podcast I'm a first generation college student so mm-hmm. that alone was my motivation to you know definitely break that barrier and make that change in my family and go to college so that was like my biggest biggest thing and then of course being close to adults at you know in high school or in middle school who did go to college they always talk about their college experience which made me even more excited to actually experience that college life so being a first generation college student then hearing those experiences from adults who did go to college made me super super excited and even taking AP classes in high school which is kind of weird because I know a lot of us hated AP classes you know that's the advanced placement classes and honors classes they we hated them during high school but I kind of was in love with it because of what I learned and you know they the teachers always say well in college you'll be learning something similar similar to this and if you pass this class as a college credit so all those things definitely factored into my excitement and actually wanting to go to school period not even for a particular major but actually just wanting to go to school so how did you end up in the major um so funny story guys (laughs) I First thought I wanted to be, no, let's take, let's go back some. I first thought I wanted to be a psychology major, and that was because of an AP class. I was so in love with everything we were learning about psychology, everything that we were doing, and then I had to do my research as far as, like, how far you could go with psychology, you know, if you were going to be a psychologist, a psychiatrist, you know, things of that nature. So it was like, okay, you got to get your master, you got to get your PhD, you got to do this, you got to do that. And I'm like, I got to do all that just to make this amount of money. And then it was like, uh, no. So then of course I had friends freshman year who were actually in psychology. Like that was their major. They had started everything and I didn't enter as psychology. I went under, um, what did I go under? I entered undecided. I entered undecided when I actually did, you know, apply and get accepted. I entered undecided. So they were like, oh my gosh, I got this paper, that paper. and da, 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 da. So of course in my mind, I'm like, uh, no. <laughs> it's not for me and they were just like really stressed out already in their freshman year with psychology so in my opinion I was just like yeah I don't want to be stressed out I don't think this is for me and I already did my research not happening so we had this thing called freshman seminar and it was another professional seminar it's a professional seminar it was every Friday and this is at Bethune Cookman University so if any of my listeners go to Cookman I'm not sure if they still have it now but they did have this thing called professional seminar so we went to professional seminar and They had different um, majors there in different departments and whatever. So they were like, okay, communications over here. If you think you might want to be in communications or this, that, and the third, walk over there. So I just walked over to communications because I knew about journalism. I 
really great at writing. I love to write. So I'm like, okay, maybe, you know, you want to look into that. We know the psychology is off the picture. So let's go check out journalism. So I'm over here thinking, yeah, journalism is the way to go. I didn't, please do your research, guys. I didn't know the difference between actual journalism and broadcast journalism. So they were separating us into groups and they're like, okay, broadcast journalism over here. So in my mind, I heard journalism. I walk over there to the journalism section. By my surprise, the director was there and he's like, okay, we're going to go around. Everybody give a 30 second elevator speech. And he explained what it was. So of course, ironically, he calls on me first. So I'm not shy. I'm like, hi, I'm Alain Mobley, yada, 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 get into the whole spiel. So at the end of it, he's like, okay, after everybody spoke, I only know two people and that's Milan and such and such because nobody else delivered. So Milan, you're going to be working with Andre and Andre was a junior at the time, a young man that was to cook me. You're going to be working with him on FM radio and such and such. You're going to be on AM radio. So now I'm on the radio. Tatum, I'm on the radio. <laughs> I'm like, what? So in my mind, like none of this is, none of this is like really processing. I'm here to write. Like what? what am I doing on the radio? I didn't say anything. I just kind of stuck with it. So I spent every Wednesday for about four hours in the radio, learning the different, the mixed table, learning different things on the radio. I actually did a voiceover for the alphas for their Greek step show. You know, I was doing a lot with the radio station. So I actually loved it. Ended up meeting the freshman class president and everything. Um, a few days after professional seminar and they're like, we're looking for a public relations coordinator. And I'm like, okay. He's like, you want to do it? I'm like, sure, I can do that. And I know I told y'all this story briefly before. Long story short with that, did my research on that, figured out what I needed to do as a PR coordinator for the freshman class or what a PR coordinator does anyway so I could apply that. Started doing PR coordinator, fell in love with the whole idea of PR and made that my major. I stuck with the radio, which was cool, no problem, because I was like kind of like a quote-unquote extracurricular thing. But I ended up picking PR as my major. And after that, the story wrote itself. That's so interesting because I think that when it comes to college, something that a lot of people, I want to say miss, but kind of don't realize is once you graduate high school, you're only 18. And I know for anybody that's listening to us who may be still in high school or y'all might be young in college, you're still young. You might not think you're young or you might not think you're a baby. You might think you're grown, but you're still young. You have no idea what you want and you're going to grow and change and things like that. So I know when I was graduating in high school, I just wanted to, I wanted to go to college because I was trying to get up out my house. Like that was just it. I needed somewhere to go. I didn't really care about the education part. I figured like, I figured that I'll figure it out when I get there. I didn't didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do in my life yet. Like, I think I mentioned this before, but my mother um, does a network marketing company and she's been doing it since I was a kid. So I was somewhat familiar with entrepreneurship based off of that. Like she worked from home. She didn't go to a nine to five every day. So I knew that I wanted something that gave me the freedom like that, but I wasn't sure, like, you know, I want to start a business. This is what my business is going to be. I'm going to be a boss. Like, that wasn't really my thought process. I was just like, I don't just need to get up out the house. College seems like that's the way this will happen, so that's what I'm going to do. And so when I got there, I was undecided, too. I went to Morgan State, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to help people, so <laughs> same as Milan, psychology seemed to be it. Then I was like, well... Somebody told me, like, well, if you do psychology, you got to understand that you're going to have to go to school for a long time. I was like, whoa, that's not going to happen. I'm not trying to be getting a doctorate and all of that. So I was like, well, I got to figure something else out. So I joined this PR organization on campus. It was called Access PR. And one of my best friends at the time, she was a PR major. And so I joined just with her. And um, I liked it. And so what I liked about PR was how broad it was. I can do so many things. I first learned about marketing um, in that PR group. I first learned about so many things. So I was like, well, I'm going to just make this my major. And then I can pretty much do whatever I want when I graduated. So I ended up majoring in PR and then ended up working in marketing. So I still wasn't even that far off once I graduated. But the initial decision to go to school was 100%. I'm trying to get up out this house. And I think that's, that's just the natural progression for a lot of people. But as it relates to entrepreneurship, 
I don't think that having a degree is necessary because a lot of people don't have the money to go to college. Like a lot of people don't have, are able to get the loans or whatever the case may be. Everybody's not in a position to transition straight from um, high school to college. So sometimes you do have those students who may be a little bit older trying to figure out like if I really need to go to college. But I don't think that it's necessary to go to college to be an entrepreneur. Milan, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely not. I don't think you need to go to college to be an entrepreneur because my mom and dad wanted me to go to school for business so bad. Like, <laughs> so, so bad. They're like, you need to go to school for business. You know how much stuff you can do with business? Like, I body on that. That business conversation, I think, made me hate business. <laughs> it was just like an ongoing conversation. So, look at Tatum and I today. We're entrepreneurs in business which means we kind of had to teach ourselves business but we didn't go to school for it. like I didn't have to go to school uh, to learn business to be an entrepreneur and that's what I think their perception was at the time like my mom always said you know you're going to do your own thing she would always say that and she was like that's how you need to do the business so you know how to do it da, 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 da. and my dad was like yeah you know in business you could work in corporate America and this that and the third but I went to school for PR. They didn't teach us business. I got out, knew I went to open my own PR agency. And I say that to say, I opened a business on something my degree was on. Let me in with the school to business for business. What was I going to open a business on, if that makes sense? Like, yes, I have other traits and stuff. Yeah, I would know how to, quote unquote, you know, run a business, knowing what, op- but knowing what organization should fall under, knowing the taxes, knowing all of that. But that's stuff that I've learned because I have a PR agency and I need to know these things, not because I just went to school for business and I took it and I tried to open something. You know, it's like I went, I got my degree in what I loved and what I felt was best. And then I took it and ran with it in a higher capacity. That's a really good point that you made. Like if you would have majored in business, what were you going to do? Because even when I was looking into different majors before I even decided on PR, when I looked at business, it was like accounting, um, of course, marketing was there, um, but everything it seemed to be teaching you how to be an executive. I didn't want to be the CFO or nothing. I don't like math like that. Just tell me how much money I got. <laughs> like that's all I care about, you know. And I didn't care about all the other stuff. And I felt like the business degree it teaches you, like I said, how to be an executive. So you can be the CEO of a company somebody else built because there's a difference of being of course just because you're a CEO don't mean you're an entrepreneur but I think that having a business degree and even MBAs they just teach you how to be a executive level employee and even some business major tracks have like entrepreneurship I'm a little I want to just somebody who who is pursuing a degree in entrepreneurship because I really want to know what the hell are they teaching you because how like i just don't understand how can you have a curriculum for entrepreneurship especially when everybody's journey is so like individualized i don't know but anyway i agree i definitely don't think that you need a um you need a degree in order to be an entrepreneur or you need a business degree in order to be an entrepreneur but one thing I do say, though, like one thing I did like about college is it was kind of like a pre-adulthood to where it was like you was grown in a sense to where you had like the freedom, but you wasn't like totally out paying rent or mortgage or car lo- car notes or paying for your whole life. Like it was kind of like that one foot into adult life. And I know for me, in my college years, I learned so much about myself. Like, I'm almost scared to know who i become if it wasn't for college. Because I just learned just so much. The things that I went through, I was able to try different things without having to worry about the stresses of paying bills and everything. Like, I had endless jobs. Like, I had so many jobs. <laughs> but I was always able to try new things. I started my blog, which jump-started me into be, to being a mentor for different organizations, which jump-started me to where I am today. So it was like, for me, I think that college just gives you that life experience that really forces you to get some type of structure towards your day. Like, so, because you know you got class during this time, between this time and this time. So then you got to figure out, when am I going to When am I going to eat? When am I going to socialize? Like, it puts that structure in your life that I think can be applied 
to your entrepreneurial journey because when you're an entrepreneur, it's like, all right, when am I going to work in my business? All right, when am I going to work on my business? Or I have to speak here, so I need to prepare during this time for this. Like, it's the same thing. You just taking out what the obligations are, but there's still a sense of structure that's needed in your entrepreneurial journey. So I do think that people who have gone to college sometimes do have a little bit of a life advantage because of the different things that college, the college experience gives you. But again, like you definitely don't need it at all. What, what do you think um, are some things that you learn in college, Milan, that you're able to apply to your entrepreneurial journey? I learned so much um, from undergrad, and that was because I was involved in so many different organizations, one being SGA. SGA is a business, y'all. Like, if you have been in SGA or around SGA, you know it is a business, down from planning a homecoming, that's event planning right there, from corresponding back and forth with um the promoter to their artist that's PR because you got to lock in and secure stuff so it was like so many different things that happened within SGA that prepared me to be an entrepreneur be a publicist you know all of those things and be a CEO because SGA president I was my vice president I we were in charge of a cabinet full of what 14 to 17 individuals and then that didn't include her being in charge of the senate so just picture having 17 people on the executive board everybody in a different position you have a weekly well bi-weekly or weekly meetings um you yourself i know for me i probably had three to four meetings a day plus class plus everything sga had going on so we had an event homecoming time jesus we had meetings every morning with the vice president of student affairs um the current student activities um, coordinator and other people we had and my coordinator campus activities and my vice president, my treasurer, all of us had meetings every morning, I think at like 7 a.m. during homecoming. And if you know homecoming as SGA, we don't go to sleep or finish that night or that evening of events until about 3 a.m. So then we back up at 7. Then I still got to go to class and then go to an event, you know, that night. So that constant balance of having to go to class, having to work around meetings or having to be in a meeting on time, having to plan something, deal with different attitudes, the different bodies of people prepared me to walk out into this world as a publicist and interact with whomever comes my way. Because again, it's having seen people on the e-board. Everybody has different personalities. Everybody has different responsibility. So SGA was probably, I think, out of all of my organizations from NCNW, my sorority, all of that, that definitely prepared me for entrepreneurship and definitely being a CEO and just having those leadership skills. So I would never trade my experience for undergrad. I'm so grateful and I'm I'm so happy that I did experience college because without that, I probably wouldn't even know how to do any of this. Yeah, I agree. Even like reminiscing back on my, that time management thing was like so key. And it's some of the same things that I did then are the things that I do now to try to balance everything that I have going on. Cause I was, I was a student ambassador. So I did like campus tours and stuff like that. And I was an RA and I had like the ultimate hustle. Being a student ambassador paid for my schooling being already paid for my housing. So I was like, price. I was like, what? I ain't spending no money. I ain't about to be in that much debt. I still got loans from like my first year. But I was like hustling for real. But I did those two things. And then I had, um, I was on a dance team for some time. And then I did SGA for a short period of time. Um, and then wow, I was doing a lot of stuff on campus. And then I did my blog and then I had so much going on. I had an internship because I wanted more money. Um, and so, and then I had, I think it was something else I did. Either way, I had a whole lot of things going on. And then I'm even thinking back to like my senior year, I had got uh, pregnant my senior year. And so I had a miscarriage. So even going through like that emotional time, kind of, trained me now to be able to handle to still be able to take care of business while maybe going through something in my personal life that was probably my biggest lesson in college because just because I was going through that thing I had to go to class 
I still had to uh, take my exams. I still had to keep my GPA up. Even though I haven't gone back to grad school, and as of today, I change all the time. I don't want to. I still wanted to. It was important to me to make sure I left the door open. I, I didn't want it to be like I couldn't go to grad school because I couldn't get in. I wanted it to be if I didn't go to grad school, it was going to be because I just didn't want to. So still trying to keep my grades up, still attending all of my jobs and my internships. Like I had to learn how to get myself together quick and not get sucked into what I may have been going in, going through in my personal life, but then also understanding how to, to basic level of self care, like how to feel the feels, so to speak, like how to embrace the emotions that I have and let myself feel them, but not get so sucked into it that I can't take care of business. And so those are the same things that I use now. Like, I mentioned on last week's episode how we're going through something in my family where my father's uh, about to be incarcerated, like dealing with that, but having to take care of business. I still left my job. I still did all these things. Like I still had to make sure, I still have to make sure I take care of business no matter what's going on in my personal life. And so that, I think that experience in college really like prepared me um, for now. And then even with the different friendships, I went through like, waves of friends in college and relationships don't get me started on that we didn't all had our fair share of f boys especially in college <laughs> but um even different relationships just knowing now the things that i can and can't deal with like i was in a relationship in college that was so unhealthy it did take me away from a lot of the things that I should have been doing. My grades dropped. I wasn't showing up the things I needed to show up for. I was late to work. Like understanding that now as an adult, I know what it's like to not have high enough standards. So now it's like, no, my relationship now, you're not about to stress me out or I'm not about to be in anything toxic. So just those life lessons, man, have been so integral for me now that I learned in college. So for y'all that listen to us, that our current college students get involved on campus make sure that you are just living it up like do everything that you can do now while you're in college don't make stupid mistakes but you know make the mistakes that you're going to make because you have the opportunity to live life kind of before stepping out into full adulthood. So definitely get to know yourself as much as you can during this time. Apply yourself on campus, get good grades, um, join different organizations, get your leadership skills up, not to find a job, but so that if you do decide to become an entrepreneur, do all of these things so that you can have good habits, good skills, good character traits to apply to your business because college they teach you everything that they say you need to know to get an entry-level job that's basically what college is a piece of paper you're supposed to know enough to be to get your foot in the door somewhere and then you on your own after that but when it comes to running your business that's something different so you for y'all that are in college make sure that you learn as much as you can now so that you can apply that one day to your entrepreneurial journey so Milan, you actually went back to school. Shout out to you because, Lord. <laughs> like, you went back to school. So, like, what, why did you decide to go back? I'm still asking myself that same question. <laughs> um, I decided to go back, one, because I felt like not discrediting Bowie, Morgan people or anybody else. I'm not discrediting my institution. However, I do not feel like the program, the PR program itself, and that particular professor who taught majority of the classes provided me with everything that I needed to know. Now, don't get me wrong, the PR program definitely had certain professors, like my public opinion professor and my public relations writing professor and a few others that definitely taught us great things that I can say I, you know, I was solid with, but the majority of the classes that we need in PR to help us with the essentials of PR, it wasn't there. And it's so crazy. I say that a lot of Bowie students who've applied to my internships currently and in the past or whatever the case may be, I can actually see that within their applications that are PR majors, that is not there. And I know one of those professors that was really, really great, she's not there anymore. And the other one is there still, but she's not teaching the class that I had. But 
nonetheless, I felt like I didn't have everything that I needed to know. So George Washington offered that strategic public relations class and strategic is more in depth. It teaches about, it taught me about corporate social responsibility, um, principles of accounting for PR majors, which is crazy because you probably think how the hell do you need accounting and PR, but you'd be surprised because it comes down with that ROI, return on investment, stakeholders and all those things when companies go through their issues and how PR managers and professionals have to know those things in order to help them um, help them effectively with a communications plan. But I say that to say, I didn't know any of that coming from Bowie. Um, what else? Media ethics. That was a great class from George Washington that I did take at Bowie, but we got more in depth in it. So I say, of course, all of that to say I wanted more. So that's why I decided to go back to school because I knew I needed more and I wanted more. And yes, PR is experience based. Yes, it is. But I wanted the knowledge too. So I wanted my experience and my knowledge to at least add up versus having all this experience and picking up knowledge here and there. But now I have an advantage over a lot of, you know, public relations professionals who may have not gotten what I got from GW. I think that's a really good point. And that's like the key when it comes to college. Because with undergrad, it's like, you you get your degree, but it's 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 a, a very immature in a sense. But when you come into going into grad school, you're a little bit more cognizant of what you're going to school for and what you're going to be using that degree for. So for people who um, are considering going back to school, like Milan said, if you want that knowledge base to go with your experience, like that's a really good reason to go back to school, and that makes her so much more competitive when it comes to people hiring a publicist she's like look i got two degrees in this and this is what i've been able to do, to do with my clients so for y'all that are on the fence with on if you should go back to school if that's something that you can make happen because school is most definitely super expensive if that's something that you can make happen that might be something that's really great for you um to do but for other people like for me i plan i want to get a couple more certifications or a couple certifications I don't think as of now, I told y'all, every day I change up, but um, as of now, I don't want to go back to grad school, but I do want to get, um, I want to get a social media certification and I want to get a marketing certification because what I'm learning now, just based off of my competitors or other business coaches out there is people will, people do stuff. Um, so let's say we started this podcast. I could teach you how to start a podcast based off of how I started my podcast. I could teach you how to start a youth program based off of how I started my youth program. I think that's great, but I think that's very limiting as well. I want to learn the principles and the theories behind it. So not only can I give you my experience, I could give you what the textbook says, just the same reason that Milan just said, I could give you what the textbook says. So if the way I did it might not work for you, I have 10 other ways that you can apply to your business because I took the time to do this. Or with me, because I've invested so much money in myself uh, as far as paying for business coaching programs and stuff like that, because I've invested so much in myself, I now have such a, a, a variety of knowledge I can give you that's more than just teaching you what I've done. You know what I'm saying? And I can comfortably charge for that because I've spent way more than I'm asking for people to spend on me. So when it comes to education, I think that for you guys that are business owners, you have to find what that sweet spot combination is of education and experience. And then you have to decide, and I would suggest checking out your competition because being aware of your competitors is just a smart thing to do in business. And not aware in the sense where you're paying attention to what they're doing and making yourself insecure, or you're comparing yourself, or you're trying to bite what they're doing, but just being aware of what they're doing so that you can so that you can do something better or fill a gap that they're leaving open. So I, I think that everybody should really look into ways to educate themselves. If you can't afford the, 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 um, the graduate degree, the master's degree, get a certification. If you, if you don't want to get a certification, take some classes. Like definitely, definitely, definitely invest in education. 
Because education is something that nobody can take away from you. People can't take experience away either. But I think when you really invest in the education on what it is that you specifically do or your specific niche, then you want to really position yourself in a better way. Because I know, even for me, like, if I'm looking to have somebody do something for me, it's one thing if they they're good at it for themselves or they've made it work for themselves but i want to know what's your education behind it because we were even Ron and i were even kind of talking about this before we started recording and not to really give away we talk about people a lot on here and i'm really trying <laughs> to find a way to say it. <laughs> i don't like say names but we were talking about somebody who's very successful in uh, a certain area and i was saying They've made it work for them, but how is that going to work for me? Like, if if you figured out how to, what's an example I, that I do not give this away? What's something totally off the wall? <laughs> uh, say, let's use a press release, for example. If every press release that you write for yourself gets you coverage, but you can't tell me what are what the test textbooks say for the best practices of press releases. I don't want to work with you because that only works for you. Like I'm a whole different person with a whole different business and a whole different thing going on. Like I need more than what you did that works for you. Central Alt Delete ain't gonna work for me. So your cheat codes might be cool, but I I don't know. I just need more. I don't know, Malai, do you agree? Like, do you look for education and experience when you hire people? Or are you like, as long as you can do it for yourself, I'm with it? No. I, listen, listen. After spending almost $100,000, honey, I'm looking for education. I'm looking for every bit of piece of education in everybody. And it's just to say, because I put myself through it, and I'm expecting the same type. Like, I think I was having a conversation. Who was I having a conversation with? Oh, I can't drop that name. Sorry. With another person in PR and we were talking, you know, back and forth and they're a little bit older than I am and they've been doing it a little bit longer. And I was like, yeah, da, 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 da. and they're like, oh, what's that? And I'm like, ah, the op-ed, that's, you know, that's in a newspaper. You submit that when you want to, oh, okay. And I'm just like, what? And it's like, okay, yeah, your press release may have worked, but I bet if you try to submit it to the Washington Post or, you know, something... All this to say, yes, you can have the connection in there, but sometimes your education and the things that you learn, like an op-ed column, for, will go a little bit further with somebody. Let's say I don't know anybody at the Washington Post, but I do submit that op-ed column to somebody off the charts. They're going to look at it, appreciate it, because I know what it is. I've submitted it in the right way, and that's the connection that's now built. But for somebody who may just know, if say don't work for the Washington Post and I knew her and I had that connection, I'm just going to hand her this press release, and she's going to switch it up and make it look good. So I say that meaning diversifying and knowing how to diversify. So at least I had it where I can have a connection. But if I don't have a connection, boom, I'm still in the door with no hesitation because I do know what I'm doing from education. And I'm good off experience because I just know how to pitch. So that's just my spiel. But like I said, that hundred thousands of dollars, boo, I need everybody to be on board. <laughs> and some people might say it's, it's working smarter and not harder to uh, to build those connections as opposed to getting that education. But I'm like, why be a one trick pony? Like, I would prefer to be over prepared as opposed to under prepared. So if my home girl that work and like using your same example that work at my Washington Post got fired tomorrow, then what I'm going to do? Like, I think in business you should never, ever, ever put yourself in, back yourself into a corner. And I think when you only rely on your experience and not the education part, then you really back yourself in a corner because you don't know what you don't know. But, but and the same goes for the opposite. If you only rely on your education and you don't have any experience, you're backing yourself into a corner as well because there's certain things that you'll learn in the field that you may not necessarily learn in a classroom. So I think the smart thing to do for everybody who's an entrepreneur is find that balance of education and experience. And if you can't, like I said, if you cannot afford the full education, the full degree, then get you them certifications. Do what you got to do. But that balance of the two, I think, is like, everything so 
Yeah, so, um, Milan, are there any, like, PR certifications? I'm just curious. Yes, GW actually offers one. Surprisingly. Oh, for real? Yeah, it is a PR certification. I forgot what the stipulations were for the reason why I didn't want to take it, but they definitely do have a PR certification. And I looked at it, but like I said, I don't really remember exactly what shot me away from it. Yeah, I think certifications are uh, good. But then you also, when you have, it's easy to say I have a master's degree in yada yada. But if you say like, I'm a ABC, say that stands for awesome business coach. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> knows, nobody knows what that ABC certification stands for. So don't just be putting ABC behind your name on everything. Nobody knows what that means. You have to figure out a way to market yourself that includes your certifications, that includes your education, your experience, whatever, in strategic ways. So whether that be what I would probably do after, um, well, I'm not going to tell y'all that. Never mind. <laughs> but um, I think, yeah, once you get that education, you should really start marketing yourself in that, in that way to differentiate yourself be between your competition. Because there's going to be other people that do what you do. That's just what it is. So having that education and those certifications, those degrees, I think is going to be like really important for everybody that's listening. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I'm going to get a certification in event planning because we do event PR. So, mm -hmm. also, and again, it just goes back off of what you just said. It just makes it better because at least I have more knowledge on actually the planning part. So then I can have that, you know, planning and PR. Because granted, I can plan an event. I've done several of them. But I'll be more well-rounded and more than just that entertainment realm. So if it is where people want to kind of switch up the event and kind of throw a little you know, something else in it, at least I'll know how to quickly do it and be more efficient and effective with it. So I am definitely going to get an event planning certification, not today, not tomorrow, not next month, not in six months, but it's coming soon. I just need a mental break because GW definitely took a lot of my energy. Um, I'm grateful for it, though, but it took a lot of my energy that I no longer have. <laughs> but Tatum, I do actually have a question. Since we are talking about school, it came up on my Instagram live last week. A young lady was asking, she was saying she has a business or she wants to have a business or she has a business, one of the two, and she's in college, but she wants to know how to brand herself and keep her image a certain way while still having fun in college. What are your suggestions? I'm not sure she's going to listen to the podcast, but I can always tell her to listen so she could hear a second opinion. I was kind of on the same thing, the same tip as her when I was in school. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do after school, but I knew that I wasn't about to let anything that I did in college destroy the option. <laughs> so, um, and social media was kind of just coming out then. Like, Instagram, I think, came out while I was in college. Twitter came out. Twitter got popping while I was there. So, social media wasn't as big. Like, now you can't go nowhere without somebody having their phone out. But um, if I was her, I would create like a website of my name, like TatumHarrison.com, whatever. It's my blog. I'm blogging about different things that interest me. I'm talking about all the uh, organizations I'm a part of and how much I love them or things that I've learned. I'm posting like projects that I've done online. Like I would make an online profile or blog that's totally around like my accomplishments and my interests. And if I have, let's say I'm a PR major, then I would get a whole bunch of organizations under my belt where I'm doing PR work and I'm able to post press releases. Or I'm able to post um, about different uh, media opportunities I've been able to secure for whatever on campus. So if I was her, I would really just create that online profile and start there. And secondly, she just have to be mindful of what she does and who she's around. If you have a group of friends who all are about having fun, but they know that they want to have a future outside of college, then they're not going to be doing certain things. Like they're not about to be rolling blunts on Instagram. Like they're not about to be on Facebook or on Snapchat or wherever with taking shots, standing on top of a bar. Like, it's certain things that you're just not going to do. So I think that she should also get around like-minded people so they can all understand that y'all on the same thing. And also just don't be out acting ratchet. Like, it's just, it's as simple as that. 
you can't you can't be put out there for making crazy decisions if you don't make the decision in the first place. So I'm not saying don't have fun. Definitely have fun, but just be mindful as well of what it is that you're doing. Like I avoid, that's something like that I kind of deal with now. Like I like to have fun. I don't really do clubs or whatever, but I like to go out too. But now I have to be mindful of the things that I do. So I, I know that in certain places, I'm just not going to go. Like, you're not about to catch me in, uh, what's a good place uh, for the D.C. area? You're not about to really catch me on U Street too often. <laughs> like, because it's just a lot that be going on. But you might catch me in park in a section at a table being classy, looking cute. But you're not about to catch me. All right, in the champagne glass. Exactly. But you're not going to catch me. <laughs> at Apple Lounge off U Street twerking in the middle. Like, it's just not going to happen. And for all of y'all that know what Apple Lounge is or don't, Apple Lounge is like a hole in the wall. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so for her, when well, you in college, like, I mean, that's what it is. I know when I was in school, we had Wasted Wednesdays every Wednesday at our apartment, and we got drunk faithfully every week. So I get it. Like, <laughs> I did some crazy stuff. Hate them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So, like, <laughs> there are so many stories, but I will not do that to myself. But what you what you have to do is really just get around like minded people, avoid cell phones. <laughs> I'm the girl that will like if I see a snap. If somebody like, oh, get in my snap, I'm hiding from it. Like, I'm just not here for the Snapchats. You will not catch me in the background doing nothing. But yeah, just paint the picture that you need to paint online. Have your fun. Just have it offline. That's it. And keep positive people around you. Yeah, absolutely. I kind of gave her the same advice. And I'm just like, you know, if you put it on there, would you be ashamed later? Mm -hmm. I'm like, don't be in in a cute... Halloween party getting picked up in the air, have people videotape you, and you all know by Snapchat. <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, those are the things you don't want to do. I'm like, but still have your fun. And I made, I gave myself an ex- as an example. I said, I travel, you know, now as even being out of school, I'm like, I travel. I'm in my little bathing suits, but you're, you never see a back shot of me in a bathing suit. Mm-hmm. That's what I will not do. If you see a back shot of me, I probably have, you know, I'm fully clothed. But it's never where you could see the bikini, you know, up my butt a little bit. And no, that's not what this is about. It's not this what it's for. You can see the little cleavage because I can't hide that, but deliberately posting my butt, you know what I mean? That's something that you got to go to the extreme about. Why do girls do that? Oh my God. That is, I know this is off topic, but I don't care. That is like such a pet peeve of mine. You like, but then it'll be like, yo, what's that caption? I call them like, excuse my language, I call them bad bitch captions because I feel like this is what all the little chicks who somebody's paying their bills, the Amber Rose supporters, like, I feel like this is the type of stuff that they be posting. Like, it'll be some picture of them totally from the back, long weave, but snatched, like, I ain't gonna take that from them. But, and it'd be some caption, like, uh, some song lyric, like, I don't even know, I can't even think of one. <laughs> I'm <laughs> feeling like Floyd in this Mayweather. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's what I was about to say. <laughs> I'm like, I how you feeling like Floyd? I get the look, I get the analogy and the metaphor of it, but the gag is Floyd got money, <laughs> hella money. <laughs> so you using that sis, you still broke. <laughs> you still broke. Like I'm just, I'm just saying, like. I mean, I would use it and everything, but see, I'm going to use it, you know, in front of a G-Wagon or something. You know, like, say, you know how I get down. I'm going to use it in front of something that could be believable. They just be standing outside of a park. <laughs> the seafood dress on and a thong up their butt, talking about something feeling like Floyd and his Mayweather. Outside a park where you just paid a $40 cover charge, ma? You ain't even getting it for free, and you probably standing up. Right. But you know, that's me thinking of you. On South Beach with your heels and your bikini on, your thong bathing suits with some stilettos. I just want y'all to know, y'all look crazy doing that. So to all our black girl bosses, as a black girl boss, as a boss, don't be standing no heels and no bikini because your feet hurt. You look crazy. You at the pool. Wear your feet on and your galoshes or whatever you need to wear or whatever. And get your ass in that water. Or don't <laughs> get your bare feet. Don't wear no heels. 
I'd be like, who are you trying to impress? Like, why? What made you think I'm put on, ooh, I'm about to kill him on the beach? Foo, it's some hills, sis. Why? Like, I don't understand. I don't understand at all. And, and that, and to be on topic of this, because I don't want, us, want our, uh, our listeners to think that we're bashing or anything. We're saying this to say, we see a lot of black girl bosses who do do this. And that is not a way, or if you think that's enhancing or increasing your brand, it's not. It's enhancing your the way you look and people saying, oh yeah, she looks bomb. But that's not quality of what you can bring to the table of a product or a service. Yeah. It's not. Yeah, you're- and it's one thing to show the entrepreneur lifestyle. Like if you have a, a successful business and it's a Monday and you want a yacht in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea chilling, like shout out to you. Like that's boss stuff to me. Like, you know, everybody at work punching numbers and you like, you know what? I decided to go on vacation because I can't like that's boss stuff to me. But if, if the only thing that you feel like you can bring to the table is your body, like to me, that's just silly. That's just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I could do a whole, I could literally go on and on about the whole, how about like, I call them Amber Rose supporters. And I love Amber Rose too. I just don't like the way she goes about it. But I, uh, anyway, don't use your body to try to build your brand. Because then you just become an Instagram model. And once Instagram goes up and the next social media comes out, then what's your, what's your business going to be? Yeah, absolutely. So just keep that in mind, ladies, when you are branding yourself on social media and you see all these girls, all these followers and stuff, don't think that you have to do the same thing to gain that following or to gain that backing and support because that's, that's not that. Yes, I have a picture of my bathing suit, but I do have many other pictures on there and I'm fully clothed to have just as many likes. But again, I was in Vegas for my birthday. It wasn't like I was just out here at Sky Day Party in D.C. flexing. <laughs> yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like, you know, nobody is saying you got to be in a turtleneck and uh, sweatpants all day. But, you know, be sexy. If you want to show how you feeling yourself, do your thing. But just, I think it's just the people whose intentions are, I'm doing this for attention. Like, the people who need those different likes to validate who they are. Those those are the things that I don't like. But if you just feeling yourself that day, knock yourself out. But also just understand you're building a brand. So if that one day you feeling sexy, cool. But if like every day, all the time, you're naked on social media, that's painting a different perception that you might not want for your brand, depending on what it is. But... <laughs> That might not be the picture that you want to paint, so. Absolutely. So for baby girl who asked that question on my live, this all factors into that question. (laughs) So I hope that helps you. I hope that your brand is successful and you will grow within your business with our advice. So just let us know if you have any more questions. And on my live, we're definitely listening and ask us questions. Because y'all ain't been asking questions lately, first of all. I know. I haven't been putting it out there, though, so that's half my fault, too. No, but they know. <laughs> they know better. They know that they can ask us questions. They all listen to us every Monday. You know we say the same thing. DM us if you have any questions or email us. You know. Mm-hmm. So, since we, uh, we haven't done wins in a long time, what are some of your recent wins? Oh, wait. Okay, y'all not gonna clown me, so let me get my, my guests together. Since I ain't done it in a while. Y'all, y'all can be quick to clown me and knowing we ain't done it in a while. Let's see. Hold on. Give me a second. Okay, I got it now. We good. I had to make sure it was working. Okay. <clears throat> for myself, prepare myself. <clears throat> All right. So my win for the week, and I only provide one, I was able to secure a spot for one of our clients at the Angel Brinks fashion day party as a model hosted by DJ Khaled for the BET weekend. So that was my only win, but it was a big win. So I'm satisfied with only having that one for the week. See dog. I mean, I've been on my deathbed all week. So (laughs) 
I'm just going to say, because I can't even think right now of one. I didn't prepare one. So I'm just going to say I survived this week. I've been sick all freaking week. I woke up. I woke up on Monday. My throat was scratchy. By Tuesday, I sounded like a man. Like, my voice was mad deep. It wasn't working half the time. I sound, I had, like, the worst smoker's cough. Like, it was, oh. it was crazy. But I still sound crazy. I was not as crazy as I did before, but I still sound crazy. But I can breathe out my nose. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not stuck on in the bed all day. Thank you, Jesus. So my win is that I survived whatever little bug tried to take me out. Yes. 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 So that is it for this week's episode, you guys. Definitely, definitely, definitely come out to our live show. Tickets are available on our website at www.blackgirlbosses.com. Follow us on Instagram at Black Girl Bosses, and we will talk to you next week. See ya.